Hey folks, it's Mike with Sailfish Solar. So I want to talk to you today about demand charges for commercial facilities. Most people think um, that the electric bill is really only how much electricity you use. And at your house, that is true. But for businesses and commercial properties, there's another charge that can be even bigger. And it's called a demand charge. A demand charge is based on the single moment throughout the course of a month that your building is using the most power at once. So not the whole month, just the highest spike at any given moment in time. Uh, imagine turning everything on at the same time. Air conditioning, the equipment, the pumps, the machinery, the computers, the lights, all of it at once. That creates a power spike. Um, the utility company has to build and maintain enough grid capacity to handle that spike. That's something that they're, you're, they're regulated and required to do. So, of course, they're going to charge you for it even if it only happens for a second or even for 15 minutes, uh, even if it happens just one time in the entire month, the utility companies are still gonna charge you for that demand spike. And that's what's known as the demand charge. So in Florida, you'll see this with the investor-owned utilities, with all utilities, but the investor-owned utilities, the big ones, Duke, Gulf, uh, 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 FPNL, and Tico, um, you know, they all have these demand charges, these significant demand charges in place. So FPNL typically charges between eight and eighteen dollars per kilowatt of your highest demand. Duke Energy can be as high as eleven dollars to thirty dollars per kilowatt for your highest demand. So if your building hits a peak of let's call it 50 kilowatt hours and the rate is $20 per kilowatt, your demand charge could actually be an extra $1,000 per month. It's a significant charge. And that's all just from one spike that occurs. A lot of business owners aren't really dialed into this, um, but it's something you really should be aware of. So how does solar power fit into the equation? Well, look, solar reduces your everyday energy use. That part is simple. Um, but when it comes to demand charging uh, charges, the timing actually matters. If your highest power spike occurs during the day while the solar system is producing, then undoubtedly the solar system is going to reduce that spike and lower your overall demand charge. But if your peak uh, spike happens in the late afternoon or into the evening or at five o'clock in the morning, when your solar system isn't really producing at its maximum, your demand charge might be unaffected completely by your solar. So it really needs to, we need to determine when does that demand charge occur. Now, what we would do to, to figure that out is we would collect what's called incremental billing data from you to where we can actually see every 15 minutes or even every, every 60 seconds on what your actual uh, uh, energy consumption looks like and when that demand spike occurs. Um, so yes, you know, solar does help, of course, but sometimes it only solves half of the problem. The real solution, if your spike happens outside of daylight hours, is to add battery storage, right? Solar supplies uh, power during daylight hours, um, and then the battery kicks in during your peak moments. So batteries can be programmed to discharge power at any time throughout the course of the day. The battery keeps your power levels flat instead of spiking, right? And that's what reduces the demand charge consistently. So again, energy savings comes from the solar power. Demand savings comes from either solar during the day or battery discharge during those peak periods. Together, though, they create this predictable, stable, lower monthly power bills. So if you want to know whether or not your building is paying high demand charges or whether solar or solar plus battery storage would actually reduce them, send us your most recent electricity bill. We can tell just by looking at it, for the most part, whether or not the demand charge is something that we're going to be able to tackle or whether or not we're going to need to uh, add batteries in order to tackle it. We'll analyze your power bill. We'll show you exactly where the demand is, uh, charges are occurring, and we'll show you what we can do to control those demand charges as well as the basic energy consumption charges. There's no guesswork. There's no obligation. It's just pure clarity on exactly what you can expect from a commercial solar system. All right. That's a little bit about demand charges. We appreciate you stopping by. All right. Thanks.